Good morning. Um, my name is Daryl Rader. I'm the president and CEO of Menorum Gold. Before we begin, I'm just going to highlight our forward-looking statements. Um, please do your due diligence prior to investing, as there's a lot of events, especially capital markets related, happening at the moment that are out of our control. So for those of you that don't know Menorum, we're what we call a discovery developer. We have made a number of major discoveries in the gold and silver space in Mexico over the last couple decades. And we believe we're on to our next with Menorum at the Alamos Silver Project, which I'll get into uh, some more details here. But this just shows you a bit of our track record. Our team has discovered over 300 million ounces of silver in Mexico, over 16 million ounces of gold. And we built a pipeline of projects that we're exploring um, systematically starting with our Alamos project, which is receiving about 90% of our time and money. And then we also control an entire VMS district, and we're the largest landholder at the moment in the heart of the Guerrero Gold Belt. Management team, um, you'll see we have a number, a fair bit of experience on the discovery side is on the right column there. Some of the discoveries we've been involved with, um, some of the companies we're involved with, most notably the company was founded by Dr. Peter McGaw of Mag Silver. Um, I have a background with um, the silver and drilling side in Mexico, worked about 23 years now in Mexico. We have David Medelec, who some of you may know, is the president of K92 on the board. So we have a good mix of especially uh, exploration geology specialists in our team here. On the capitalization side, we're primarily financed out of family offices and high net worth investors out of Europe, but we have started over the last couple of years um, doing a bit more work on getting some institutional shareholders here in uh, the United States and in Canada, and you'll just see a few of those listed below. So for Mexico, our focus is the Alamo Silver Project. This is a project where we have drilled approximately 43,000 meters. Every subsequent drill program we've done, the project keeps standing up to the rigorous exploration strategy we have, which is trying to see as quickly as possible if this is a tier one asset. So the Alamos project is sort of our flagship 1A, our Santa Marta um, VMS Copper Gold District in southern Mexico is sort of our flagship 1B. That used to be the flagship of uh, Lowell Copper, now Solaris Copper, and it's a project that uh, we're per in permitting now. We're making progress, and we uh, look forward to drilling that here, hopefully sometime uh, early next year. But getting into Alamos, Alamos was one of the highest grade historical producing silver districts in Mexico. It had production over 200 million ounces of silver at a grade of several kilos per ton silver as well as several percent copper. This is a project that we acquired through a family out of Hermosillo, a family that had originally put together the Santa Elena project, which went to Silvercrest number one, um, and ultimately now First Majestic. And this was a project where the family spent about five, six years and almost $2 million US to consolidate for the first time. They looked at um, discussing with a number of companies back in 2016 when they were finally ready to go and vend it off and uh, we jumped on it pretty quickly when the opportunity arose. So the keys to us at Alamos and the way we explore is we like to see, if we're exploring for silver, we want to see that it's a tier one silver asset, it has that kind of potential. On the gold side, we'd like to see that it has you know, also a tier one sort of level. And what that means to us is ultimately on the silver space, we like to very clearly see 100 million ounce silver potential. On the gold side, we'd like to see at least three to four million ounce gold potential. So what we have here in the gold is sort of our benchmarks that we work internally on and what we'd like to see on an asset. And then in the white is what Alamos has delivered over the last six years of exploration. So we'd like to see, first of all, high grade. The average underground mining grade right now in Mexico is approximately about 140 to 150 grams per ton silver. We like to see silver at at least 200 grams silver, 350 silver equivalent. Thus far, and I have a slide on it, I'll go into a bit more detail, our average grade is 214 grams or 350 silver equivalent. That is an average grade of every single vein intersection we've ever drilled in our 103 holes. Um, so that is a, a representative grade of what the potential of the district is, but as we start focusing in on the specific silver shoots, we'll see that grade increase, because this includes everything from some nice hits we had in silver shoots to a lot of areas where the vein may pinch and we hit you know, 50 centimeters of 50 grams. Each of those vein intersections went into that average calculation. Permitted, 
Uh, what makes us a little unique is that we are fully permitted through to production. We have our MIA, we have access to high voltage power, paved roads, water reservoirs. There's a water reservoir, a smaller one directly on the project. There's a much larger one nearby that also has a hydro dam. Um, we have long-term exploration through exploitation agreements with our communities on the project. And we also border Piedras Verdes, which is the third largest open pit copper mine in Mexico. On the potential side, we've, we've proven through all of our drill programs that this is a silver district. It has a lot of veins. We've drilled, well, we discovered 26 separate vein zones. We drilled 19 and 13 of them hit high grade results. One of the things I'll just mention on our drilling philosophy is we always wanna see as quickly as possible how big this can be. So one of the things we have always done in our company is if we hit, we step out aggressively, typically four to 500 meters a long strike at depth just to see if what we hit has some size to it. And at Alamos, every time we've drilled our main targets, we've hit and so we've continued that process forward. As I mentioned, this is the average vein intersection and some holes maybe had two or three vein intersections in them. Each of those went into this calculation. And this gives you an idea of the robustness of these vein systems. As you know, in Mexico, quite often these veins are you know, 50 centimeters, 500 grams, or maybe a meter of a couple hundred grams, and you have to really dilute them to be able to get your uh, mining equipment in. But here, the average width of our discoveries is about 2.8 meters. You can see the average silver um, and silver equivalent grades. This in all likelihood is plumbed by the large porphyry mine uh, or porphyry deposit directly to the north of us. So typically the highest grade silver is associated with the highest grade copper and our average copper grades are, are pretty robust there. But typically if we're hitting anything above 500 grams per ton silver, we're typically seeing multiple percent copper along with that result. On the permitting side, we did a bit of a different approach um, when we started the project. We brought our team, Peter McGaw, Dave Jones at the time, who was still around, and a few of our other geos down to the Alamos project at the beginning. We, they looked at it and said, you know, this looks to be the real deal. It looks to have the size potential. So what we did is we did a sort of a two-track exploration and permit development pro process. So we started exploring and drilling at the same time we started to permit the project for production. The idea ultimately was we were hoping that by the time of the initial resource, we would have our permits ready for production. What happened instead with COVID and some of the delays and not, you know, not being able to go drill in the village at times in 20, 2020 and 2021 on the project, um, our resource is a little bit behind schedule, but then we do have all of our mining permits. And so when I say mining permits is it's shovel ready, we have mining permits to do underground mining. We have our environmental permits. We're about five years into our environmental baseline studies, which includes semi-annual water, air testing, uh, plant and flora um, studies. We're into our fourth year of bat migratory studies. We have already received from the, Mex uh, the University of Mexico City, one of their specialists there, um, approval that mining activities will not affect migratory bat species. So we've really sort of de-risked this project very heavily on the permitting side, and on the drilling side, we're getting closer to that initial resource. As it says here, subject to financing, we expect an initial resource somewhere in the uh, second half of this coming year. So we talk about district scale, what kind of potential is there? As I said, this was a major historical producer, over 200 million ounces produced at very high grades. There are the remains of two copper smelters on the project. We went into this and sort of did a, uh, a mag silver approach that was really emphasized by Peter McGaw, which was ignore the old things, look for brand new things, drill aggressively, look at new vein systems. As I said, we discovered over 26 new vein systems. And so we did a lot of drilling, made a new discovery at Europa Guadalupe. And then in the last couple of years here, we've started to focus a bit more inward and looking at the historical mines, seeing if there's some exploration potential there. And what we've proven thus far is the Promontory and Minas Nuevas mines have extensions at depth that we have drilled up to 200 meters below the deepest workings and we're still in high grade mineralization. Um, these are some high grade historical results that we acquired a couple of years ago. We are starting to depend on them a bit more. Most of those results are from what we call remnant mineralization mineralization that was left behind by the original miners, something we haven't really focused on, 
but the grades show there was a lot left behind, and now that we're getting underground at Promontoria, we're actually accessing some of these drill holes that were drilled underground, and, we're, and they're lining up with what the historical records are, so they become a lot more dependable now for us as we plan our future exploration. Um, these are just sort of our district scalability. Pr these veins, um, there's a, a number of them represented there. Most of them, as you can see, are new discoveries, most notably at Europa Guadalupe, which we drilled eight meters of 1700 with a couple percent copper and a, a fair number of base metals attached to it as well. This covers about a 10 square kilometer area of veins and this all falls within our mining permitted area. So advancing the silver shoots, our maiden resource, which we're anticipating here in the next six months, um, is going to focus on advancing only four of the silver shoots that we've drilled to date. We've, d we've had about five or six holes into four separate shoots. Some of the shoots have had a few more holes, like Europa Guadalupe, where we're, where we're uh, at about a dozen holes at this point. Some of, we've also discovered another three to four targets where we're two to three holes in that look like silver shoots, but those are shoots that will drill off at a later date and would add to an ultimate you know, secondary resource update. But it, our first focus is Europa Guadalupe, where we're finding pretty robust thickness, good grades over a wide area. This is going to be a, a good portion of our initial resource. Promontorio is an area, this is now a historical mine, we've discovered two silver shoots here. As mentioned, we drilled up to 200 meters below those shoots. We're still in high grade mineralization. Um, these show you just a few of the grades. This is the Promontorio mine is a bit more of a mature system. It's in a, uh, in a, and it's in a horse, so it's been pushed up. It had a lot of historical mining, but it did not go very deep, only to about a depth of 200 meters. These holes are all from below that 200 meters. You can see the polymetallic nature of the mineralization, but also as we get deeper, we're starting to see gold elevate considerably. As you can see, that 3.8 meter intersection there has over 2.6 grams per ton gold, along with robust silver and base metal grades. So this is also an area that we're going to be focusing on, Promontorio. Um, this shows basically the mined out area. We will probably, once we get full underground access, we will be doing some drilling of remnant mineralization, more so to look for parallel vein systems, stacked veins, maybe splays or other shoots that were missed by the original miners. Um, before we received the historical data, we put two holes in here without you know, knowing what we were drilling. Both holes hit old workings. But this gives you a bit of an idea of what remnant mineralization can look like in the system. You know, the one hole hit 20 meters, which was about 75% true thickness of almost 400 grams silver equivalent. So this is a robust system. There's a lot of drilling still to be done, but we're moving pretty advanced forward as far as accessing the underground and getting to the point where we can, in the next few months here, finish the underground development, start doing underground drilling, and ramp up our resource um, studies and getting ready to produce one for the Promontorio shoots. This shows you the size of the workings. These are not little tiny Mexican workings. This, these are the historic workings. They measure almost three by three meters large. Um, we have accessed about 600 meters of the haulage level into multiple internal shafts that we're going to clear out, access the bottom levels, get an idea for what the original deposit looked like, and situate underground rills, uh, drills to get uh, below the deepest levels of the mines. This is, just gives you an example, you know, this is a shooty system. You get very high grade core parts of these shoots typically. Um, this is one of the areas from Promontorio that we found. Um, this is basically the kind of material that was mined historically. This is just a fragment of a multi-ton boulder that we found. And this is the kind of stuff we see in historical reports where they were getting very high copper grades, very high silver, and which led to the construction of the two copper smelters on the project. Minas Nuevas is the, the last target that we're going to be advancing to a resource uh, as part of the four silver shoots. This has a historical resource, non-43-101, on it of about 15 million ounces, grading 300 grams per ton silver. There were no base metal um, assays done historically on it. The drilling was done in the 70s. We've come in, from what we've seen in drilling, the grades are very close to what the, the original historical resource was. So our plan is to go in and drill here systematically, prove that historical up to a 43101 standard, and that'll just form the basis of another one of these, these four shoots that we're advancing. And you can see our most recent hole was 609 grams over 9.9 .9 meters. 
So um, the catalyst, basically, we're going to continue our underground development. We're going to continue advancing towards our initial resource, and we'll probably also get some news out on some of our other projects, um, exploration results from our JV partners and some of the other permitting efforts that we're uh, continuing. So if there's any questions, happy to answer them. Otherwise, um, our website is menorum.com. Great. Yes, sir. Um, yes. Uh, how deep did the uh, previous gold uh, workings go down to? So the La Quintera mine, which is the largest historical producer, had about 100 million ounces mined out of it. That went to a vertical depth of 500 meters from surface. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons we see that potential in some of the neighboring historical mines like Promontorio and Minas Nuevas is that um, Quintera is at 500 meters depth. Promontorio is at only about 200 meters depth, and it's only separated by about half a kilometer from La Quintera, and then a bit further north, Minas Nuevas, where we had that historical resource, that's only been mined down to about 170 meters. So we see the potential that as we get lower in the neighboring systems, you maybe have two, three, 400 meter potential at depth. Quintera has more potential depth um, potential, but we have not drilled it extensively because you know, you're drilling basically, if you want to get below the old workings, you're going down six, 700 meters. And with an angled drill hole, it's probably a 900 meter long hole. So we've gone for sort of the easier targets first. Once we get those up to speed, we'll probably go back into Quintera and take a look what's down there. So, so these would okay. ultimately... We're, we're, I'm sorry, we're, we're, we're out of time. If you okay. guys could take that one in the, in sure. the lobby, please. Thank you. All right, th thanks, Dan.